Hi there. Today we are going to talk about a couple different ways to mix ingredients, specifically creaming. For your lab today or for your at-home cooking today, you're going to be choosing a cookie or a cake to make and likely you will be asked to cream some sort of fat with some sort of sugar. Depending on what tools you have at home, you um, will have to go about this in a different way. So if you have a stand-up mixer at home, this one's a KitchenAid, which a lot of, if you have one, you likely have a KitchenAid, but there are other models as well. This is a tilt model. You have one lever here that you open and it tilts up like so. This makes it easier to add ingredients as well as put your, your attachment on. Other attachments that generally come with your KitchenAid mixer, your stand-up mixer, would be a beater as well as a dough hook. Those are the three standard, but especially KitchenAid, they have so many different types of attachments that you can get for this, including grain grinders, meat grinders, pasta makers, literally, literally there are, I think, hundreds of things that you can add to this machine. So I am using a soft margarine. Ideally, you would use butter, but I know it's more expensive. So making sure it's soft means that when you cream your ingredients, they will, be, they will incorporate more, uh, more thoroughly. You'll get a better, product at the end if you use a soft margarine. So I've got just some margarine in there. I'm going to add in my sugar, just a half a cup of sugar for the purposes of this recipe. There we go. Now, when you go to put your attachment on, so in this case the paddle, I'm looking to, for this spot right here to make sure it goes on the hook and then I'm going to twist it around so that it's secure. Just double check that it's on there securely before you start. The next thing is that once I've tilted down, I want to make sure that I've locked it in place. If you don't lock it in place, your machine will start to bump up and down um, and you can actually wreck your machine. So with this, I'm going to start on just a stir or a low. And what we're, looking, what we're looking for is for the sugar and the margarine to get a little fluffy. We're trying to add in some air while we incorporate those two ingredients. Your stand-up mixer will have a variety of speeds. So in that situation, I went to a level two, but usually I'm just gonna turn this around so you can see, some of them will go up to a level 10. I don't know in my entire time of using my KitchenAid mixer if I've ever needed for it to go up to a level 10, but the machine is capable of doing that. Okay. If you have a, some models are a little bit different. So this model, like I said, was the tilt model, which goes up like so and then you can release the bowl, but some have a lever here or a lever on the side that the bowl goes up and the bowl goes down. One thing you just wanna be cautious of is when you're adding in ingredients, specifically flour, to your bowl, you don't wanna add them too quickly, otherwise you'll get flour going everywhere because the paddle or the whisk or the dough hook is moving at such a quick speed. These are great, because you can leave them. If you want dough to be kneaded for 10 to 15 minutes, I can throw my ingredients in, set it, forget it, work on something else in the kitchen. That's one of, I think, their, their strongest pro, um, pros or the best things about them. But I will say they are very expensive. These will range anywhere 300 to 500, sometimes more in terms of dollars. So if you have one, they're great, but they're not necessary. Um, when you look to clean the KitchenAid mixer, um, the attachments, if they are metal, like so, they should never go into the dishwasher. You're going, you're going to want to protect them by washing them by hand in your sink. If they have this plastic coating on them, they are in fact dishwasher safe. So those can go in the dishwasher. Like our blenders, we don't want to stick any utensil into the bowl while it's going. After it's off and we're done, you can tip it up, unplug it, making sure it's not on, And then we can use a spatula to get off all this extra product and put it back into our batter. So another option you might have at home is a 
handheld mixer. These will also come with various attachments. They come with a, a whisk and a dough hook as well, but in general, you're going to be using the beaters. And I'll show you two different things that they can do. So this one, um, we're gonna show again the creaming of the, um, the soften, softened fat. So this is just margarine and the sugar. There it is in the bowl. But with your mixer, you have the attachments stuck and there will always be a button to release them. So on this one, there's a lever here like that and they just come out. When you put them in, they should click, click in place like so and you should be able to gently tug on them and they won't come out. The hand mixers are specifically designed to rest over top of the bowl so the back half of them will be flat. This means that when you're done, you can put it back up like this to let any batter or creamed mixture or whatever it is you're working on go back into your product bowl. When it's not in use, keep it unplugged. We don't want it to turn on um, randomly as you're not wanting it to be on. Be mindful of the cord as always. And again, for washing, anything that's connected to a cord does not go into the sink. This can get wiped down with a clean cloth or a damp cloth. And these, however, can go into the sink or the dishwasher. When we're using the electric mixer, you wanna make sure that it's straight up and down. We don't want it on an angle, otherwise it'll spray ingredients. And your other hand should be holding the bowl steady. So it goes up and down like so. And then this one's got a, on the top. Moving over here. When you go to take out the ingredients, um, sometimes it can be handy to just lift slightly up and let the ingredients fly into your bowl, so long as your bowl is big enough. You don't want to take them out above the rim of the bowl, but this way you can get some of that extra ingredient off your mixers, like so, so that you're not having too big of a job to clean off the mixers here. You will know your own hand mixer the best. You, there's various speeds on a hand mixer. You sometimes range between one and 10, one and eight. Again, it depends on the model and make that you have at home. But just know that to start slow and add more speed as you go. You don't wanna go to a six off the get-go and have ingredients fly everywhere. Um, if you have, again, flour that you're adding, make sure you add it slowly so that you don't end up in a poof of flour. Um, and we wanna start with a low speed as well. So if you don't have any of the electronics at home, the hand mixer or the stand-up mixer, you can do creaming, anything that's required for cook cookies and cake in a mixing bowl with hand tools. The three that you're going to want to look for is to have a wooden spoon. Sometimes there are plastic versions, but I recommend getting a wooden one. A rubber spatula and then a whisk. For the wooden spoon, the wooden spoon is a very versatile tool. Because of it being wood, it's not a conductor. So it's actually great for um, using on the stove as well. If you're mixing soups, um, it won't conduct heat, meaning that the handle will never get hot. For making your cookies or cake or for creaming your softened margarine, this is the, um, when you're making it by hand, it's the most important to have it soft because otherwise it's gonna be incredibly difficult to mix. So I've got my softened margarine adding in my sugar like so and I'm going to use my wooden spoon to physically mix those things together. It will take more time, it will take more effort, but your product at the end should be no worse for wear. You can use your spatula if you need to get it off of there as you're going because it will stick. So as you're going, just keep working at it, removing things from the spoon, um, keep mixing it. It does, it takes time. It is by hand, you're, it's more manual, but you'll get there. And when you do, there we go, there it comes. You'll start to notice that it just, you can tell it, it's fully incorporated and it starts to get a more airy look to it. 
So no lumps, it's smooth, it's ready to add in the egg or whatever's next in your recipe. If you're doing a cake batter for your choice, um, your whisk is gonna be what you're going to need to use later on when you're trying to create a nice smooth batter. Good luck. I hope you choose a treat that you enjoy. Remember, we always want you to, I always want you to pick something that you're going to enjoy or you and your family works for you. Um, and I hope you have a good time making this treat. I can't wait to see what you come